Hello and welcome back. Eric Hoagland, General Contractor, coming to you from Brandenburg. Today, we are going to show you how to finish out your drywall tape seams. Start to finish, coat one all the way to the finish coat. Completely simple, all about technique and finesse. So for those of you at home uh, that think that, you know, you got some tape seams in your house to address, uh, you got some drywall work repair, some things you think that you can finish out. You actually can. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that uh, for the people that just don't have time. You're too busy. Uh, at least by seeing this video, you're going to know what to expect when you hire somebody and bring them in your house. You're going to know what it's supposed to be like so that you can have a pretty finish like you're supposed to have. So here we go. I want to show you a couple things right off the gate, uh, what not to do, how things are not supposed to look. So if you see some of these things in the video and you know these things are in your home, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to flip this camera around so that we can start the video process and I'm going to take you through step by step and show you everything. So here we go. Okay, so here we are flipped back around and what I'm trying to get you to see is I know you can see that. That's a tape seam right in the middle of a wall. It's actually already been done by a professional. Um, so we are in the same lady's house where she has already had some mud work done and this was the turnout. So I'm going to show you now how you can avoid things like this from happening to you. Okay, so here we go. This is the corner I chose that I'm going to fix. I've done quite a bit of mud work already in this house. And uh, in doing so with the video, I kind of ran out of corners for to show you. So I'm going to do this corner. This corner was finished out, um, I don't know, five, six months ago. Uh, it just, it wasn't done right. So I'm going to pick this corner uh, to show you uh, another reason I'm picking this corner is because one side of this corner this is typical in a lot of people's homes They don't have a whole lot of room here. They're working with and finishing this guy out is You know, uh, you just don't want it sticking out at the end of the rainbow like a sore thumb So first things first what we need to do is I need to show you uh, There is all different kinds of drywall tape out here uh, And what I use for my corner specifically is this guy you can get this at Home Depot, Lowe's, it's about 15 bucks, and it is, it is a perfect 90, it's called Sureline, it is a perfect 90 degree tape, and the difference in this tape is the thickness, uh, the cardboard like finish in behind, it's just thicker, it's got the perforated edges, and it's already creased in the center, so it's going to fold very easily uh, going into your corner, and I'm getting ready to show you how. So what you want to do when you get started, uh, do not use regular tape, uh, do not use mesh tape, uh, don't use anything like that. These are perfect in a corner. Uh, they just do really well. A lot of corners in people's homes don't quite come together with the drywall. So this is a hard, stiff backing that's going to accommodate to any gap that you may have to help you with air pockets and so on. So all we want to do. So we want to take this tape and we kind of want to dry fit it here on the wall. And I'm going to run this tape down about like this. Walk it down here with your hand. It might come down slapping your head. That's okay. We're going to let this guy unroll. We're going to pull him tight. And we're going to get this just about a half inch off the floor because of baseboard trim layer and all those things, it'll cover it up. You don't want it getting that close to the floor. So you end up getting things on the floor. I always use a microfiber towel. Um, it's just really easy. It's square. It fits in every corner, every outer corner, in front of every seam. It just makes it nice. And it's easy at the end of the day just to pick this up and not have to go around and do a bunch of cleaning. So all you want to do with an inner corner is take these guys and just go with that middle perforation already. Uh, he kind of wants to bind up on you a little bit to straighten him out. And you're just going to fold this guy in half so that he's already sitting there flat. Uh, always, always check, check the dry fit just to make sure before you go to all the trouble of putting this mud in here and have to take him back out. So he's exactly perfect. So we're going to take him folded up. We're going to set him right to the side. I'm going to come right in here. This is called my workhorse. Uh, it's going to do everything. I don't switch a bunch of different size knives. There's no need. This guy here will finish you out start to finish. It is literally this simple. 
Uh, we're going to start the scalp top here. Your first coat, you want to get some mud on here. Uh, you want to get a nice little layer to give this guy something to stick to. But again, you're not going to cake it on here. There's a huge difference. So anytime I do my mud work, a lot of people start their mud work off just like this. Uh, professionals, you all know better. Anytime uh, you're getting ready to apply mud on the wall, I I'm getting ready to pick this side to start on. So I'm going to rake just like that, the opposite side. And what that's going to allow, it's going to allow when I put this up here and I push down and start pulling, it's going to allow it not to run on the outside of my knife and it's actually going to give me a line going down to work with. So this is not that thick. Obviously you wouldn't want to leave it on here like that. That's what this video is for. Uh, this is going to look a little funny at first, but uh, quickly here in just a couple of minutes, you'll see, um, again, these corners here are very hard because they're shorter than my knife. So same rules apply, same thing. You're just going to have a little more, bit more of a mess trying to come off at you because it's a short corner. That's exactly how that's supposed to look right this second. Now watch this. I'm going to speed this up here just a little bit for you and roll on just so I have time to show you some other things. When you get this far down to the bottom, come down to the bottom and then work that section up to that. This side here is good to go. We're going to catch this side back up. I know what you're thinking. Oh my goodness, that's, you know, that's a lot of mud on there. Uh, it is, but there's a reason it's on there. Give me just a second here and you'll quickly see why this is no big deal. There it is. Okay. So, had to get enough mud work on there. Give my tape something to stick to. So, now I'm going to show you. You take your tape. You already had set. You stick him in here close. You always want to start at the top. The top is what you want to get to set right. All right. This is going to get a little messy on your fingers. Just getting going, pushing him in. I'm starting at the top and I'm holding above and I'm pushing down and tight into the corner. Then I'm going to come on the other side and push tight into the corner. And what that's doing is pushing that mud in behind there and it's pushing it out, getting the air pockets out. I'm going to continue going down to the wall. I'm pushing in and down. you got to hold up above. In and down. That's going to get that tape to sit on there just so. You're going to get it on your hand. It's no big deal. You can get it off here in just a minute. All right. You're going to clean off your hands real quick. If your tape happened to move down from the ceiling, just take it, push it right back up while it's still able to be moved. Go. All right, so all I did was just clean my hands off real quick. Doesn't take me a second. All right, so we're gonna take some more mud. Again, I'm gonna start with this wall. I'm gonna rake it off this way. Now I'm gonna put a layer in front of this. And I'm gonna ever so slowly drag this guy down just to cover up in front of that tape. We're going to do the same thing with this side. Just want to get that tape nice and covered. Depending on how you push your knife and how fast you go, you can usually catch these lumps over here on the side, as you can see, so that they don't even really ever fall or any of that. I still know what you're thinking. There's no way this is going to look right. Trust me. Once you get that nice looking slicked up coat on there, then you're going to come back through. Oh, there you go. That's why I have that there. Just happened. So glad I had that there. So now, this is the most important 
thing right here. Everybody wants to start here and they want to get all this off and, and you don't do that. What you want to do is take that knife with nothing on it and you want to go about halfway and you want to pull up just like that because what you're doing is making a paper thin edge right here at your ending point. So, you want to do the whole thing and you're leaving this thick section on purpose. Because since my knife is six inches and this seam is a little wider than six inches, I will keep fighting these lines back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then it's starting to dry and then I got lines everywhere. So if you get half of that guy off and you have a paper thin edge, then you can come in here for the other half. And look at that. Just like that. Now, this will happen, no big deal. Put a little mud there. Go right back over that guy. When you get close to the bottom again, reverse it. Come up to where you ended. Now, again, this wall here is a little bit different. There is no flaring it out like this wall out to here because the wall is only so big. So, just like over there, start at the top or bottom. You want to angle your knife in towards that seam. Now, we are shoving mud back over here on this other side. No big deal. No big deal. It's going to happen. You have to finish one or the other to start. So now that this side is clean, we're gonna go back to this side, right here in the corner, and ever so slightly, just pull down and get that little bit of edge that worked its way over there. Take your knife for final, run it right up this wall, get those little crummies off that are hanging and fell right over that corner. And just like that, coat one is on, beautifully paper thin edges uh, second coat if not for sure third coat this guy will be completely hidden no question so if if you ever want to do try a tape seam if uh, if you want to try do a drywall work in your home this is exactly how you go about it every seam we do in this video from this point on uh, is going to be how to try to uh, you know make people aware uh, most people can do this themselves if they just know the right steps to take. So just like a couple of minutes ago, what looked a little bit in question right out the gate, this is coat one and most videos I see and most people's work I see does not look like this or anything close to this on coat one, which is why I showed you uh, the finish seams in that pink room right when I started this video. So if you hire anybody and they come in to finish your drywall work out or anything, relatively, it should look something like this coat one. If, uh, if they come in your house and this is what they do and they move on from there to another scene, uh, you, you probably need to stop right there and you probably need to politely tell them that you need to get somebody else. Uh, just telling you, you will have a nightmare of a problem if someone comes into your home or yourself and puts this down like that and tries to hide that tape seam. So big difference in this and this. Uh, I'm sure there's more ways you can get to this. I just tried to simplify it for you. What works for me, I was not fighting any of this mud work. I wasn't fighting these lines. And anybody that finishes drywall work knows that these Smaller corners are very hard to get to and very hard to do. So again, if they come in here and their mud work kind of looks like this, or I don't know, I've, I've seen some mud work kind of look like this, uh, probably a good idea not to let them keep going through your house, or you're going to have a lot of problems at the end. And uh, not to mention your entire house is going to be one big dust ball. Uh, we have very minimal cleaning. Uh, we have very minimal dusting because uh, all we do when I'm finished is we buff this guy there is no sanding so um, that's pretty much it we're gonna go ahead now I already had some seams prepared 
that were dry with the first coat already done, moving into coat two. So let's go see how we apply coat two. Okay, so here we are. Uh, coat one is already done. So I've already staged a couple of tape seams in this home just so we can speed up this video and you can see what's going on. And what I want to point out is how you know this is coat one is because my edge line, there's only one of them. There's one on this side and there's one over here on this side. So that's how you know that I haven't done anything, uh, sped anything up. This is exactly what the first coat looked like. So now I'm going to show you exactly how we do coat two. So first, what you want to do uh, with the first video, what we did, you know, we, we, we basically went the whole stretch. We had to because we had to get the tape on. When it comes to coat two, you can actually change it up. You don't have to be in a rush. Uh, you can put this coat on in stages, and that's what I'm getting ready to show you. You don't have to do the whole thing so it starts to take uh, set up on you, and uh, you, you got to rush through, and stuff's already trying to dry. It all depends on the temperature in your home, uh, moisture in the air, a lot of things as to how much time you've actually got. So coat two, very simple. Uh, just like in the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to start up here. Remember the little trick I taught you. Um, whichever way you're going to go on whichever side, you need to have that raked off the other side. So we're going to start on this side, which is why I took it off that side. So when I flip it around, all my mud's going to go in and not really come out. So right at the top, we need to go above where we originally left off, always. Right at the top, I'm going to start and we're going to miss that trim up there and we're going to exactly go right in and we're only going to go to here. I'm not going to go all the way down yet. I want plenty of time to make sure this is right. These are going to mend together the further I go. We'll get into that. Now we're going on the other side, opposite direction. Now, because the trim stops up here, that's where you start every time. If you want to bring it down the exact same way, and I'm going to stop in the exact same spot. Now that is thick. It's not, but it is. But I need to have some on here so I can show you. Now, what's different about this one than the first one, I'm going to rake it off both sides this time, now that my inner channels have done. And I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to bring this one out to make him wider than my original. My original was here. I need to come out wider. Each pass, each time, you need to come out wider. It only has to be a couple inches or so. You don't have to go way wide. You just need to make sure you pass the line of your original. So just like that, we're going to bring this down again. Now, I know that this looks like utter what is going on here. But I'm putting it on here this way so I can show you uh, exactly how to take it off and make your drywall perfect every time. This is the same, just like in the first one, this is the same technique that most people skip or don't know about. This is this wide. So what I want to do first is start away from the seam, and I want to get about half of this guy gone, just like that. So that's how I always, every time I coat again, I end up with a paper thin edge, even thinner than a paint. I'm going to do this guy the same way. When you lean this guy in, don't just set him there. Put the right corner down, get flush, and then ease him over flat so you don't make a huge indention in the mud. And you just want to drag down, just as simple as that. Those two passes look good. Now we're gonna we're gonna close in this middle. We're gonna ride down and grab that corner, and we're just gonna pull straight down like that. Look at that. Look at that. Same thing up here. We're gonna ride down pretty flat. Now, if you have anything left over, uh, we had a little guy get in here, cause me a little line. Just take that, get it off, take the knife, set it in that channel again, pull down one more time. If you end up with a little line like this because your drywall was a little offset, just come back and fix that line. It is literally that simple. That is coat two just as thin as our first coat. You can clearly see the difference. Uh, coat one, coat two is flared out. You want to come out a couple of inches every time. 
So the trick is, uh, these corner seams, they only take about two to three coats to really finish out and make disappear. This is only coat two. I'm not even sure if we're going to need a third. I'm going to put a third on here anyway, just in case you need a third. That way you can see it again. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the rest of the seam together, coat two, and we're going to move on to coat three. Again, every time you go to coat, just know you can certainly stop so you don't have to feel rushed. You can certainly stop. You do not have to go all the way down and stress yourself ragged trying to hurry up and rush uh, to get to it before it dries. You can pace yourself. Coat two three and so on is all about pacing yourself. So again, take about half of that away. And you notice, you don't want to be way over here. You want it to only take about half of the knife. That's a six inch knife, so you only want to take away about half of that. You need to make sure always that your knife is out past that edge you're trying to cut. It gets nice and flat. I mean, that is just paper thin. Then you're leaving everything in towards the seam that you want to look phenomenal. So now we're going to start. Don't start right at the mud work. Go a little bit uh, above and set it on there. That way you're already in the motion of going down straight when you actually hit the mud. If you get a little paper line, just come over, stick a little corner past that paper line, take it away. Look at that. Look at that. Blend it in beautifully. Looks like I went the entire stride and never stopped in between. Second coat, picture perfect, just like it's supposed to look every time. Now we're going to fix this bottom. Again, I'm going to fix the left side, so I want to take it off the left side so that the right side has the mud and it's not running out over here, falling everywhere. You want to get all the way at the bottom, and then you just want to pull up and gradually push that knife into the wall. Second coat, remember, widen it, take it off both sides, overlap about three inches or so. You just want to meet back up with where you were all the way up from the beginning. We're gonna do the other side the same way. Start down at the bottom. I'll pull that guy all the way up. And then exactly like we did up top, Got ahead of myself here. Get that line out past my original. It's very important. Just as simply as I just forgot. Get that line out to match that original line. You have to pass your original line every time. Or you're just going to build up and make a big baseball mount. And you're so going to see that in the finish. Just like right there, I didn't take enough off on the first pass, no big deal. So I'm going to come over here on the side and get that guy right off. Set this guy right down in here. And we're going to pull him straight up. Any little adjustments you got. Real easy to fix. Just like that, coat two, beautiful, phenomenal. Do you really, um, with coating it like this, the benefits, uh, sanding, everybody's worst fear. They hate hearing the word sanding. They're in 
dust all over their house. Well, this is exactly, if your mud work is done right, as you can see, I didn't even bother to cover this floor. Uh, now, I did this on purpose just to show you that we're not making a huge mess here. Uh, normally, I would have this plastic, uh, have it draped down something because any one of those that fell off could have easily hit the floor and I would have been cleaning it. I just wanted you to see as easy as this was and as clean as this really is, just have a piece of something down here just in case any of your mud were to fall. But it's really very clean. It's, it's drywall work is not as dirty as people fear that it is. It's all about the way you put it on. So as you can see, this is already pretty much uh, the, the complete edge here. I just did it. And what I want you to look at is how white that white line is. That line is so thin, it's already dry. So this means when I come to sand, I could almost buff this guy out with my finger. That's about the dust that I'm going to be dropping down here next to nothing. There is no sanding in my finish, and, and this is how finishes should be. Uh, I don't even use the word sanding. I use the word buffing. Uh, we're going to buff this guy out uh, when he's completely finished. It's, um, it's just very clean. It's very, very professional. And every one of these tape seams are just beautiful, phenomenal. They're going to look exquisite through the paint. You're never going to know they're there. So let's move on to coat three. Okay, so here we are. What I want to show you now, uh, this is definitely, this is going to be our finished coat. Okay, quickly, you can already tell that coat one and two have been applied. Just like I showed you a minute ago when we were doing coat two, now we're doing coat three. And what I'm pointing out is here's my first line. Here's my second line. So now my third line is going to come out a couple inches more. As beautiful as this guy looks. Two coated. Uh, this is a big help. This is a microfiber towel. Uh, we set this on the, anytime people have carpet, uh, it's great. The microfiber actually grabs to it. It stays tight in all your corners and it just gives you a great uh, way to collect any, any particles that may fall or anything like that. Because just like the first video, remember I told you every seam before you get ready to mud again uh, to do your next coat. All you got to do is just take a sanding block and you're not wanting to sand. You're just wanting to run it up and run it down right on that edge and right here in the center. We're going to do the edge first. So run it up and run it down. Okay, now I'm going to scoot over to the center. Run that down, run that back up, run it down, run it back up, just like that. This side's gone. Any little, uh, any little pieces, particles, anything that was sticking out that's going to cause my knife to jump and skip, cause my mud work not to finish. That's exactly what this is for. So now I'm going to do this side. If you notice, my sanding block is an angled one. These are great for these corners. Just sit it right in there and scoot it right up and back down. This is all we want to see achieve. This edge was already paper thin anyway. It is really thin now. And just like that, I want to show you, if you can get a close up here, I want to show you the amount of dust that we have. It's this easy, this simple. This is all the dust we've created from that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our final coat on here. To be honest with you, this could actually probably be painted. Uh, I doubt you would even see anything, but um, I always want to go a step past of where I think it needs to be just to ensure that it's done correctly. So we're going to put a third coat on here and finish this guy out beautifully. And again, my famous workhorse, uh, you can buy four and five different knives, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 inch blades. Again, I finish out all my drywall work with this guy. Very rarely do I pull out anything bigger unless I have a huge job that I'm trying to get finished. Uh, this is definitely my workhorse, does the job all in all. So just like before, we want to start right in that middle seam. We're going to get some 
mud going down. And just like that, pulling that, just drug a little stuff in there, no biggie. Take your knife, get that little crap that came with it out. All right. We're going to go ahead, just like Co2. Now we're out there to Co2. We're going to put one more. One more little line out here. There we go. To get him all the way out. I'm kind of looking pretty. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this other side to catch him up. You never want to do one side at a time. Ever do you want to do one side at a time. That's why I shorten it up for you, and I'm only doing a couple of feet of rip. You never want to do one complete side, then do the other side, because you're never going to not. You're always going to have mud come over to this side that you've already finished, and you're going to end up, uh, it's already started to dry because of how thin it is, and you're going to have problems. So you always want to do inner and outer corners all at the same time. Uh, that's why I shorten it up for you. So you're not doing the entire seam and trying to be rushed and overwhelmed to hurry up and make it right before it starts drying. So just like that, night and day, coat two, uh, what starts out looking really rough in a matter of seconds, really, uh, just like before, we want to go in, overlap that line, take that much away. Then, unlike code two, we only had to do that twice. Now we're gonna do it three times. So we're gonna come in again, and we're gonna still leave that last couple inches or so. So already we fanned this guy way out, looking sharp, and here's that last pull. Just like all the other ones. Look at that guy, just glowing at you. All right, same rules over here. Just like that. Any little imperfection you see, just go back up there and smooth him right back down. Now, sometimes that happens. It's no big deal. Get your knife in there sideways. Pull that little guy off just like that. Already fixed. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the rest of this wall final coated. Remember to start up above your last line a little bit so you're already rolling as you come down. Sometimes there, if you didn't get quite enough mud on, you can go back over it. Get another little pass there. You just want to get it good and coated. It's it's really not that thick on here. Uh, the ends where they flopped over look, but my actual pass is, is pretty thin considering um, what I'm going to end up taking off. Just like before. just like this it happens got a little little guy there where he didn't quite fill in so before I clean up the wall here next to it I'm gonna put a little more mud in there so I can fix it because again like I told you it shoved mud over to that thing side I'm gonna swipe him now he's fixed just like that
just like that. Now, in finishing this side, I put a little bit over there, no problem. Lightly, not near as hard as I did on the initial stride through. Just pull that down. There you go. It'll get that little bit off of there. And I'll make that corner tight and crisp. If you get any of these little guys sitting in it, just stick that right in the corner sideways, pull them little guys right off. Just like that. Coat three, completely beautiful. Uh, tomorrow when we sand this guy out, we're not. We're buffing him out. And again, when I buff this guy out, this is about the dust you're going to have down there. We take this uh, microfiber towel around with us everywhere we go. Set it in front of the place we're working on. And that's it. One towel lasts us all day. We cover the furniture just to protect anything that might kick up with the air conditioner on because it's hot and you know something sitting on the ground can easily kick up and be passed through the room. So even, even if uh, as careful as we are, we still all protect everybody's belongings, uh, things sitting out in the home just in case so that we're not cleaning somebody's home in its entirety like most people have to after they finish. If you finish this way every time, no matter how big and small your project may be, you will have the easiest time, you will have the easiest cleanup time, and you will have actually a lot less work than trying to make these seams disappear the first coat or two. It just don't work like that. It's all about paper thin each rip Every time you flare out another pass, at the end of it, the illusion is everything is tight, neat, and perfect, just like it should be. If you follow these simple steps, every time you go to finish out your drywall work, you will never have any problems or complaints in people's homes about how messy you are or... Um, you know, just the common problems that come with everything you can see at the front. It keeps you from putting your work online and showing people. Just like that. Final coat, coat three. Just flawless as ever. Very little buffing we're gonna have to do. Uh, again, how-to video. Drywall work basically from start to finish, tape seams. This is it. Later on, I'm going to be showing you how to patch a hole in your wall without having to tear any drywall out. So, again, Eric Hoagland, general contractor, coming to you from Brandenburg. Thanks, you guys. Have